Hello and welcome to another episode of my Let's Play World of Tanks. I know it's been a while, I was in Chicago last weekend and I am back now and I'm going to try getting these episodes done a little bit quicker. Now that I have a lot less going on, make them a little short instead of 30 minutes, going to back them down to about 20. So it's about three, three and a half games. See how long the games last. So anyway, people have been saying they want to see a little more artillery, so I figured I'd show you this one with my... Uh, Yag Panther, or Yag Panther, wrong tank. G Dub Panther here, which I absolutely am in love with this thing. It's just all about learning how it works and figuring it out, and I, I really enjoy it. I think it's one of the most fun tanks I've, uh, or SPGs that I could possibly have played. I just cannot believe how phenomenally accurate, devastating, and damaging it is. And I've actually been learning and trying. Everyone keeps saying, you need to call your targets, you need to move after you shoot. And now I have been. Anytime I'm getting ready to shoot something, I will 99% of the time call it out, and then I will also move after every shot unless there is no artillery, because I don't want to get hit in counter battery fire and thus my game ending in two seconds. So, that being said, onto all my little announcements before I finally get into a real game here. So, while in Chicago, I was playing in the Flames of War Adepticon uh, 1265 point tournaments wasn't playing in the Nationals that was going on, and I haven't been any tournaments with which to qualify, so I was playing in these uh, miniature tournaments hosted by GameCore, and so I placed 6th in the early war tournament out of 20, so about top 25%, not bad, and then I ended up placing 1st in the mid-war tournament, 1st out of, again, another 20, 30 signed up, but only 20 showed up, so that was a big win for me to get 1st overall, I think that's actually my first tournament which I scored first overall and I scored a bunch of like um, best general or best um, axis player or something like that but never best overall so that was actually really cool I was able to do that so that qualifies me for nationals so you all can now look for me at Historicon which is in June July somewhere in there I don't remember June July August somewhere in there down in Fredericksburg Virginia so that luckily is only about a two and a half, three hour drive from Baltimore. So it's not that bad for me, as opposed to the flight in which, oh man, I stayed up that whole weekend. But I did run into some cool people. One of my viewers came out with his wife. Uh, I've been tweeting him back and forth and talking to him on my uh, videos. Uh, he had told me about this cool little place out there called Perillo's, I believe it's called, out in Chicago. It's a chain, like, hot dog place. I really wanted to go. We talked about all the different food areas and everything else I wanted to do. And, see, I target this guy, but that guy had already called it, so I let him shoot first, by the way. Quick side note there. So, yeah. Ended up hanging out with this guy and his really cool wife. They were cool people. And I ran into a few other of you uh, people out there, my viewers. And it was cool to meet up with y'all. Um, certainly with any time that we're in the same area, feel free to give me a shout or say hi. Sorry if I didn't have enough time to dedicate to anyone, because I kind of was in the middle of the tournament. Lucky shot. And I did call it. <laughs> I'm going to point that out every time I make a shot that I call it. So anyway, where was I? Um, yeah, so yeah, that tournament was awesome. So now i got to start prepping for nationals. I already have everything painted, so it's not like I'm going to be worrying too much about that anymore. I'm not going to have to deal with uh, me randomly disappearing so I can go paint. So now I can focus a little more on this. i just got to split my time with the Xbox crew I hang out with. Other than that... Oh man, I actually have one of my headphones off right now because I am listening for the doorbell to ring to my apartment because I am getting a present today. It's my own birthday gift to myself. <laughs> Even though my birthday was, what, a couple days ago now. Uh, yeah, my birthday was awesome, by the way, but you don't need to know about my personal life. So, <laughs> that's just suffice to say, it was great. Anyway, so, I bought myself a little birthday gift. What is it? Well, yeah, get this shot, by the way. How does this happen? Hit the wrong tank. So, anyway, I ended up ordering myself a new graphics card. Because everyone's like, oh, why aren't you doing it in 1080p anymore? And I'm like, well, because I don't play in 1080p. This is actually one of the very low settings on 720p. Wow, that's probably my dryer. Or not dryer, washer you can hear. Um, yeah. So I'll try and talk over that. That's pretty loud. Anywho, yeah, so... Hold on a second. Okay, so, yeah, sorry about that. My marshal decided to make a lot of racket. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah, so, 
Anyway, I wanted to talk about the patch that's coming up, the 7.3 uh, Russian Tree Update patch. Pretty much the KV-3 is going to be moved up into a Tier 7 as opposed to a Tier 6 because as a Tier 6 it is un indestructible. And the KV is getting split into KV-1 which will remain a Tier 5 and the KV-2 which will become a Tier 6. The IS-4 becomes a Tier 10 I believe. Yeah, it moves up to a tier 10, and then the IS-8 becomes the new tier 9 heavy. And then more stuff, get, a lot of other tanks get added. I'll actually talk more to it in a different uh, video, probably the next video or two. Because I kind of want to, uh, how should I word this? Pretty much it, oh, t stupid text messages. Yeah, here we go, KV-3 moves to a tier... S 7, IS-4 moves to a tier 10, KV moves, gets divided, the new T-150 becomes the new tier 6 heavy, KV-4 is the new tier 8, ST-1 is the new tier 9, T-10, or the IS-8, is the new tier 9. So that's how it gets all divided out. I'm gonna get killed here, even though I can't see the guy, right as the cap ends. So, yeah. I will talk a little bit about this when I start recording kinda gonna wait for the video card to arrive it should be here any minute and you guys will notice a huge difference hopefully if I get it working alright so let me go take care of that and I'll be right back with some live content so here's the tank everyone wanted to see the good old M26 Pershing I uh... I know I said I was gonna get a new graphics card etc etc long story short the past is going on 18 hours I've spent trying to troubleshoot and get it to work and it didn't so now I'm back to running this thing and I'm gonna have to manipulate all my settings again because it crashed the game and all my settings got erased so I'm having to play with it a bit try and get it working again because as you notice it's chopping a bit as I'm recording but that could just be from uh, all sorts of stuff so ugh. man this might be unplayable we'll see I'll manage Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, I gotta have to play it this way. Alright, so, the M26 Pershing is actually a really nice tank. I just wish that I had some of the upgrades to it. The standard 90mm that I have is alright at best. It's not too, too bad, but it, uh, it does make do. It's not exactly the most penetrating gun. The, the highest level 90mm is what you want on this thing. So, I am going to... It is very accurate, though. At long range, it is perfect. It is a very fast tank, though, so you can use it to pretty much get anywhere you need to. Ah, oh, nuts. I'm gonna be doing this all game, I'm gonna have problems. See, now I can easily peg that thing in the uh, R2-D2 from what it appears to be the distance I'm at. Of course, I'm a little far ahead for my liking. This thing is a very very lightly armored tank so it needs to be played a little bit more cautiously it cannot sit there and go to toe to toe like a uh, Panther 2 or E75 or anything like E50 rather not E75 so just requires me to pay a little more attention not a problem I'll just have to play it like I normally would um, any of my French stuff and I mean it's what was my favorite I wanted to play the what do you want to call it um trying to remember what it's called now. E, the Panther 2 is what I actually wanted to get, but I did not mind the Pershing at all. It kind of suits my playstyle more. The fast, mobile, American run-and-gun tanks, which I do like. So don't get me wrong. I do enjoy this tank, and I'm sure I'm going to learn it. It's going to be awesome. But right now I'm actually saving up for the IS-4 because the patch comes out soon. There's this big chart as to how you're supposed to get it if you have it researched, if you don't, if you have the KVs if you don't, as to how you're supposed to do it. It's in the World of Tanks development page. Needless to say, uh, just buy the tanks. <laughs> That's the easiest way to put it. If you buy the tanks, you're going to be better off. You don't want to sit there and just have them researched because you're still going to have to buy them. And then you're going to have to pay a larger amount because it's going to be a higher tier. So, yeah. Definitely spend the time, grind up the cash. You want to be able to purchase them. That was a weird sound. So yeah, I'm still manipulating all the settings here. It's going to be a little bit of a process. Oh, nuts. That was not what I wanted to do. 
Uh, come on. There we go. So. Hey, wake up. Uh, people in there annoying me on TeamSpeak. Anywho, where was I? Yeah, so. Um, the Soviets, the heavy tanks. KV-3 is getting moved to tier 7 from a tier 5, which is very good. It was a little bit uh, overpowered, I'd say, as to where it was. But with the, the correct boost, it should be alright. Come on, I don't really have the ability to take care of him. I can just hold him up. We need the T-20 to go run and hunt down their artillery. The IS-4 is going to move to a tier 10, which is why I'm pushing hard to get it. Because if I let it go until tier 10, it's going to cost me 6 million credits as opposed to 3 million to purchase it. So that's not a good thing. You definitely want to buy it before it becomes a tier 10. And I should be able to get it soon. I'm like on the road to getting it. Ow. Thanks. Let's back up a bit. Let's uh, heal my drive or gunner. The KV is getting divided to the KV-1 and the KV-2. The T-150 is becoming a tier 6 heavy with the KV-4 becoming a tier 8 heavy. The ST-1 becoming a tier 9, and the IS-8 becoming the tier 9, replacing the IS-4. I'm nuts, I can't see what's hitting me. So that is everything in a nutshell. Before we go further into details, there's also two French premiums getting added. The 10.5 LEF H18B2 is going to be an SPG. The funny thing is, oh nuts, I really need to back up, I don't want to die. The 10.5 is actually a German captured artillery piece, so it's uh, going to be an artillery piece placed on top of a French tank. Not too bad. I mean, it's uh, probably going to be cool. So no, nothing wrong with that. The French finally getting an SPG, even though it is going to be premium. It'll be the first premium artillery piece, so that'd be cool. Then there's also the... Ah, uh, heck. Not good. And there's also the... FCM-36 Pack 40 which is a captured German uh, anti-tank gun. That is going to become a Tier 3 TD for the French, so that'll be the first TD that the French get to have. And then of course two new maps, which is South Coast, which is a Mediterranean map, and then a Dragon, Rain, Dragon Ridge, sorry, which is the first Chinese map, going with the Chinese server and also the Type 59. So, a lot of cool little updates that everyone's getting. Nothing too bad, and a lot of stuff that I like. I cannot help anybody right now. I'm way too damaged to really do much. Sadly, I need the upgrades to this version, and also I need to edit my settings, so I'm not recording at very low frames. So, yeah. Needless to say, I was kind of disappointed by that. I'm going to have to end up getting a new laptop, as opposed to just getting a graphics card to hold me over with Diablo 3 and everything else. But it's... That's just the way it is. I can't do anything about it right now. It's... It's a known issue that seems to have no known resolution. It's a... Uh, how should I put it? It is the air where your graphics drivers are have an issue, they stop working, and then a refresh or uh, Windows is able to recover them, thus uh, being playable again. But the problem is... Darn it! The problem is I cannot find a single way to resolve it. So, let's move on and do one more tank battle. Ah, oh, man, hopefully I can... We win this one. That was kind of pathetic on my end. I'm going to tweak the settings real quick. Alright, hopefully I fixed it this time. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Yep, actually, looks a lot better. I think I got it back to normal. Oh, man. Note to self, do not upgrade my graphics card. It does not work. God, I can't believe I had so much trouble and stayed up like 10 hours until like 5 a.m. last night trying to figure it out. I wanted to just give up. Oh well. Like I said, I'll just buy a new computer in the summer. Sorry guys. Just gonna have to put up with this uh, crappy graphics in the meantime. So, yeah, where was I? Uh, as for the patch coming up, all I can recommend is make sure that you have a KV with the KV2 turret in your garage. Make sure you have a KV3 in your garage and also an IS-4 fully upgraded in your garage. That's the easiest way to put it. There's a whole chart that they have on World of Tanks website that you can find. It's uh, worldoftanks.com slash en if you're 
in America, or I don't remember what the other languages are for it, slash en, slash development. That's where you want to go, lists everything that you need to know about what to own and how to get the upgraded tanks given to you. As for any recommendations on how to get there, got nothing, man. You're just going to have to uh, quickly grind them and get them. I'd imagine that patch is probably going to come out in the next uh, two, three weeks, maybe. So, that's, that's about all I got. <laughs> As for this Pershing, though, it's a work in progress. I, I'm i sure I'll like it when I get it fully upgraded. Just in the meantime, i got to... Uh-oh. Uh I'm going to have to just deal with it as is. Man, I need to get the ammo rammer in this thing. It's slow to reload. Or maybe my crew just isn't 100% yet. Which I know they're not, but... I just need to... Play around with it a bit. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Lots of heavy tanks I don't want to deal with. Let's get back down this hill where I was nice and safe before. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for shooting the ground instead of me. Your artillery shouldn't be too much of a problem. I don't want to deal with that KV if I can avoid it. Where are tanks? We have a Tiger 2, 36. Yeah, we should be good. So, what are my goals for now? Uh, nuts. Survive, how about that? I bounced? Nice. I will take it. Thank you. Not killing me. So, everyone said they wanted to see me do a T-34 versus a low in terms of money making, in terms of uh, viability, which one I'd recommend. So I am actually going to be working on that. Right now I'm actually busy trying to get the a bunch of games done. I'm doing like 10 to 15 games for each of them. Hold on. Doing about 10 to 15 games for each of them. In which case, I should hopefully be able to have an average then as to which I think gets me some more cash. And then that way I can use that to give you guys a better uh, idea of what I would recommend. Because at the moment, looking at it both right now, I've only done about 6 games. And they're pretty similar. They're both almost equal but I do there are a few that I think are doing a little or a few games which are setting it apart at the moment so I will report to you guys my findings when I complete doing that average holy cow that volume's loud let me turn it down even more uh... yeah let's turn these down to there turn this down a little bit there of course I let myself get killed Okay, yes, it's fine. Back to the game. Alright, that was bad. I let the grill hit me dead on. Oh well, I'll make two. Where was I? Yeah, so low. Or lion, rather. I know I'm going to hear about that one. Work on the lion, work on the T-34. Try and give my report as to which I think is going to do better. And that should hopefully be pretty easy to do. I don't foresee it taking too much longer because I am kind of using that as also a way to get the cash I need to afford the IS-4 because that's my next tank. As much as I want to get the E-50, I think getting the IS-4 is kind of necessary so I don't end up paying 6 million credits for it when it becomes a tier 10. Instead I'll only end up paying 3 million, 3.5 million for it now. So that's kind of my game plan. Get it now while I still can while it's cheap enough and not a problem and of course like I said it'll also give me the ability to tell you guys the which one seems to work better oh, I just tracked him right in the open here yeah that Tiger 2 is doing some pretty nice kills alright time to move up into the base hopefully this time this Pershing lives I've been having a lot of trouble with it because it's fragile I'm not used to playing the American lights or American uh, mediums anymore so I kind of need to upgrade it, throw the ammo rammer in it, maybe vents, and of course the, probably not the gun lane, but the vertical stabilizer. And that should be able to make this thing back to normal like the EZ-8 was. Of course with the upgraded gun, upgraded turret, upgraded tracks, it should be a lot better. We'll uh, go from there though. 23%. Not bad. I should be still able to maintain some composure in this battle. It's only a Tiger P does 200 something damage, 250, so I should live through one shot of that. Depending on what that Type 29 is, I should be able to live through that. 
the grill would probably hurt me, and of course the per uh, Sherman is going to do a lot of damage too. Oh, never mind, it's a T14. My mistake. Oh, I'm chopping all over the place. Yeah, I'm still going to need to tweak my graphics. That's That was a shame. I was really looking forward to that new graphics card. Really going to buy me an extra year or two without having to purchase any upgrades. So now I'm kind of set back. Kind of disappointing, but oh well, it is what it is. Now I will just have to play around and make do. Of course, I will just need to retweak all my settings even further. So, uh, come on. I'm not going to go through the rear of that. He's going to get hit by artillery anyway. I can go for the cap or I can go for those quick kills. I think I might just go and hunt them down. Uh, now I'm actually going to go hide. That, that's not good. Oh, that was perfect. Nice save. Let's see if I can't get hidden here. Because that artillery is almost ranged in on me. Yep, I'll be happy with uh, 88 hit points and a win. Don't want to find out where that Tiger P is. And I do not want to find out where that grill is. So I'm better off staying hidden. Sadly, that's just how I'm going to have to be. Let's see if I can't quickly get into this cap zone. Make it a little quicker, a little safer. Man, I'm my ping, or not ping, my uh, frame rate's all over the place. Oh well, I will, uh, that'll wrap it up here. Why not? Give me time to go and fix everything up. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I'm sorry about the delay. That was a huge disappointment on my end. I was kind of hoping that that graphics card would make all the world a difference. Kind of hoping that I wouldn't have to be dealing with this frame rate issue. But instead, it is what it is. I will deal with it. I will get it working up by next time. So look for that video where I talk about the T-34 versus the low. I'm going to do that next. And hopefully I should have the IS-4 in before the patch. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Twitter and Facebook are at the bottom. Of course, all the mods are also in the description as well. Anyway, catch you guys in the next episode. Also, steel wall and a Pershing. Beat that. Probably can, but still hilarious.